So a couple months back, Unify actually did something pretty cool, and that is releasing Unify Server OS, a way to actually get and manage Unify devices without needing like a dream machine, a cloud gateway, or anything like that. And this was particularly interesting for me because before I actually ended up with some of that equipment, I was on a hunt, just affordable Unify equipment, mostly through like Facebook Market. I ended up with quite a few good deals. I got this little guy right here. This is the Light 8 POE. I think I got that for like 40 bucks. I have a 16 port one upstairs that I'm actually currently using. I got this outdoor mounted one. All Facebook market relatively cheap. For the life of me, I couldn't find a cheap cloud gateway on like Facebook market. And it was right about that time that they released the self hosting version of this, which is awesome. And today I'm actually gonna be trying it out and I'm gonna be bringing you guys along with me. And I'm gonna be using this. Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi 5, 8 gig. I do have a Pi hat so I could power it just with PoE, which is really nice. Right now I got Ubuntu on it. I'm not gonna go through the whole setting all that up. I have a whole separate video if you're interested in doing all of that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw the Unify OS server directly on this Pi and actually adopting a few different devices that I have here. We got the eight light switch. We got this little outdoor guy. And just to make sure everything's working good, we have an access point, all self-hosted. Now there's some primary use cases for this. The main kind of thing in their marketing push, why they actually released this is mostly for MSPs as you can actually control quite a few different sites with this. So that is really nice if you're in that kind of world. And of course there's people like me who, or maybe you, who might have Unify equipment, but don't have a real good way to manage it all. There are two main cons for doing it this way is I don't believe that they support the Unify Protect this way, which sucks, that would be cool, or their voice over IP, but I'm not 100% sure on that, I'll leave a note in the video. But before all that, a Big shout out to Akiflow. Akiflow is the ultimate productivity tool designed for busy professionals. Akiflow simplifies your life by combining time blocking and integrations all into one intuitive platform. So no matter what tools you're using, whether that be Slack, Notion, Google Calendar, whatever, there's an integration for it. And for time blocking, you can easily drag and drop your tasks right into your calendar. It combines all those integrations into that one seamless environment. So no matter what you need to access or do, you could do it all in one place. It does have a AI co-pilot, which learns your habits and then will auto assign your tasks just to improve overall productivity. And the platform is incredibly flexible, incredibly customizable, including invent color coding, morning rituals, and project organization all powered by AI. There's a stats feature that provides detailed insights into your productivity, including how much time you've spent on specific tasks and projects, and it helps users identify areas of improvement and track progress over time, making it an essential tool for growth-oriented professionals. So if you're interested in learning more, do check out my custom link down below. They also offer a one-on-one -on -one onboarding call if that is something you're interested in to help you get started. So again, big thank you to Akiflow for making this this video possible. So now for the Pi, what we're going to do is plug this into our network, log in and get Unify OS all set up and ready to go. It's a pretty easy process. All right. So our Pi is online here. So let's go ahead and get connected. And we are first going to grab some prerequisites here. So if I go over, head over to Linux, we need to grab a uh, Podman and something called Sit slurp for nets and <laughs> something. Let's grab them. Which it's interesting it uses Podman as a backend, or that's a prerequisite. So let's go ahead and grab all these packages. And while it does that, we are going to want to download it. So we can go to the download page here. And we're gonna want to grab the release for Linux ARM64. If you're doing this on some other mini PC, such as one of these guys here, which is running Intel, you would want to grab the X64, but let's right click this, copy the link for the download, and then head back over to our terminal. This is just about finishing up here, and there it goes. So with the link, we are simply going to wget this right there, hit enter, it's gonna download, and then the next step, we're going to want to make it executable, so it's just a chmod x, so wait for this to finish up. Oh, two megabytes a second. Might take it a minute or five. Hey, look at that, it's almost done. 
All right, and we can see it right there. So we are going to run chmod, and this is starting with nine. So we will make that extractable and run it. So sudo this super long string, hit enter. Now it says you're about to install UOS server edition, whatever version happens to be the case. We are going to say yes. And then it should run through the process, set up everything for us that we are going to need. You can see over here, we do have some optional steps, but all these require an account, site manager, and things like that. And after that, it's just adopt to your devices. So after it installs, we should be good to go. You can see it's doing a bunch of stuff with Podman, which Podman is something I'm actually kind of diving into exploring. I'm gonna do a video soon, Docker versus Podman. So subscribe. Now, looks like it's already running right here. So we are going to grab this, give that a copy and head on over to the address. All right, <laughs> hey, there it goes. I, I was jumped the gun a bit. Uh, let's visit this website, visit website. And there we go, it's booting. So now, technically, it's we're all set up, ready to go. I am running Unify OS on this Raspberry Pi, but I do want to adopt a device or two, maybe set up a little network, make sure everything is working correctly. And I already have this uh, eight port switch in my current Unify network, so I'm probably, Going to adopt this outdoor little switch right here. If I can get it open, there we go. All right, server setup. UOS server sounds good for now. Um, oh, do I have to? Ooh, yeah, I don't. Proceed without an account. Um, I don't want any of this now, so let's continue anyway. Let's make a super strong, complicated password and agree to their terms of service. Oh, okay. Not strong enough. There we go. And then click on finish. So now it's setting up. Let's zoom in a bit so y'all can actually see it. Uh, we shouldn't really need anything else on this page. We do have some other helpful commands. So it's using system CTL. So that's how you stop and stop it, start and stop it. Information updating, migrating. I'll go ahead and link to this page down below, but let's close this out for now. And the setup is complete. So let's go to our dashboard and see what it looks like. It looks like Unify, nothing too exciting here. Well, if you're coming from something else, it's probably pretty exciting, but uh, Unify devices, we got nothing in there. So let's plug in a device and see if it just pops up, shall we? Got a uh, internet cord here. We're gonna plug her in. So P-O-E-N, plug it into this switch and it should go ahead and fire up I never actually tested this one. I hope it works. Again, I got it on Facebook Market. My uh, risk to reward ratio for getting this used may have not been there. Absolute catastrophe. Let's do the access point. Hey, this one works. I was really looking forward to that uh, outdoor switch too, so. <laughs> so this is booting up here. I reset it so it shouldn't try to automatically connect to the other uh, dream machine I have. So it's still booting up any minute now would be great hey look at that it's showing up right there click to adopt i think the other one's in there for some reason too but this one is this device right here since it has the uh, white led so let's go ahead and adopt this device it is now adopting and it should be managed pretty soon by my raspberry pi getting ready so while that gets ready let's actually dive into the settings here real quick and we are on the subnet, so it's all default, so you could go ahead and change all that. Most of all settings, at least in networking, is going to be here and available. But if I go down here to Wi-Fi, we're gonna create a new Wi-Fi network. This can be uh, something like UniPi, for example. <laughs> Give it a password, real simple. Uh, we'll do all auto just to add a Wi-Fi network. And then there we go, we have the UniPi Wi-Fi network. We could go check our Unify devices. It's still getting ready. So while it's still getting ready, you could play around a little bit more in networks if you want to. So event, like if I was actually gonna set this up and use this, I would change my subnet to not be super generic like this one that we see here. We do have some options, but we need an actual gateway to be adopted before we can actually manage and play around with some of this stuff. But I mean, it's working. My uh, current modem is in bridge mode, which is what's giving this internet access. If I click on it, you can always pre-configure if you'd like to. Now for devices, we can see it's up to date and we should have the actual network. So if I go to other networks here, 
we can see right here uni pi so if i click on that type in our password this ip is going to die <laughs> so if i hit join you can see the console is offline but i'm now on this network and ooh it reconnected nice i do have like mixed unified networks so it's a little weird when it comes to ip addresses and all that but you could use this as your primary device controller you can see that's my current one and this is our new uos right here and i should have internet access which you can see i do nice if i go to our network topology really not a lot going on here we have our uh, 7 pro the one device i have connected to it if i go to client devices you can see my current client and yeah it's really that easy it's it's super nice that they allow this to be self-hostable now it really one makes it easier to kind of adopt unify products especially if you can find some cheap ones that um actually work i mean this didn't plug and play hopefully there's something i can do here but yeah really cool stuff i am really happy they're making some decent decisions that make it more accessible to people especially people who want to self-host i mean this is probably something that's really easy to set up in like a virtual machine and proxmox if you already have one of those set up overall i really like what they're doing here again i'll link to everything that i mentioned down below and with all that i do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye